Great stuff. Thanks, Jenny. And uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. Tough act to follow with those uh, those previous two commentators. But uh, by way of introduction, my name is Matt. Uh, I work for Anthesis, who are a sustainability consultancy with offices all over the place. But in London, we're actually based in Southwark, just off Bermondsey Street. Um, and my role is to support local authorities in their response to the climate emergency, mostly by producing carbon footprints and developing action plans and so on. And I worked with, uh, with Chris and the team uh, earlier this year on the climate change strategy for Southwark Council. And I'm here to give you a sense of where emissions within Southwark come from, how we measure those, how we monitor these and, and what that picture looks like locally. So to start, I'm, I'm just going to spend a moment uh, talking about what we mean when we say carbon footprint. And what we mean by that phrase is the overall amount or quantity of emissions that we create through different activities within, a different, within different boundaries. Uh, and they're describing units of weight of carbon dioxide, normally on the scale of, of thousands of tonnes when we're talking about a local authority. And just for, for, for reference, because that feels like a really abstract thing, one tonne of carbon is roughly the amount of carbon dioxide that you and a friend would create by flying round trip to Barcelona from Heathrow. So that's a, well, it's about driving your car for about six months for, for typical usage. So it's so a, a, rough, a rough sense of scale there. Um, and we can talk about Southwark's carbon footprint firstly by defining the boundary. And that's really easy because the government has done that with our, with our borough line. So that's quite an easy, easy thing to start with. Um, and the next thing that we have to think about is the group of activities that we want to assess for emissions. And we know that burning fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide, um, which other greenhouse gases. So we can look at data that tells us uh, how much fuel is being used for certain activities within Southwark. And to make it clear, we're thinking here about how much gas all of the boilers in all of the homes in Southwark burn to keep us warm and how much petrol is sold at filling stations in the borough, how much electricity is used uh, to keep the lights on and charge up our devices. Uh, these are the kinds of activities that we can think about straight away as, uh, as part of the, the borough's carbon footprint. And it's very straightforward to use consumption data to convert that activity into a weight of emissions and then begin to build up our carbon footprint. So just taking a look at that, that, that activity for the borough. These are emissions that the borough has, if you like, the most control over. They're created within the borough through borough activities. Um, and this donut represents all of the emissions in Southwark created by the burning of fuel and the consumption of electricity within the borough. And you might hear these referred to as scope one and scope two emissions. Uh, and the orange portion of this donut represents uh, buildings, which makes up just over three quarters of this total. And the navy portion there represents transport, which is around 15%. And that smaller yellow section at the top there represents emissions associated with how we dispose of waste uh, and, and so on. Uh, and the total emissions, the, the size of this donut, if you like, is uh, around 1.2, 1.3 million tonnes of, of carbon dioxide. So that's a lot of trips to Barcelona uh, if we were to do this individually, but uh, over, this, uh, over the course of, of a year, this is roughly the, the carbon footprint of, uh, of, of sort of scope one and two emissions. And we can go into a little bit more detail with this picture. So we can break this down a bit further. And that's what we've done here. Uh, and you can see that uh, households make up just over a quarter uh, as well as uh, public buildings, so that's things like uh, schools, leisure centres, swim pools, that kind of thing, that's around about 25% as well. Uh, there are smaller slices here for, for shops, offices, restaurants, ice cream parlours, warehouses, workshops and so on. That's around about another, another quarter, comparing all of those things. And then uh, just following, following that, that donut around, uh, most, well, the overwhelming majority of transport emissions come from uh, on-road vehicles. So that's buses, taxis, uh, cars, of course, uh, motorcycles, that kind of thing. And it's worth noting that uh, we also performed a, a bit of analysis on the council's own emissions. So the, the drawing a slightly different boundary around what the council are personally, not personally, but are organizationally responsible for, you could say. Uh, and that constitutes about 12% of this, of this total. Uh, which is which is worth noting there. So, moving on, uh, looking at the amount of in borough fuel consumption, 
gives us a starting point for benchmarking emissions that come from, from borough-wide activities. But we still haven't really done enough to define the full carbon footprint of the borough. Um, in other words, we haven't considered all of the activities that we need to that create emissions within the borough. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna use an analogy here, I hope you don't mind, but let's say we all go to have a meal to celebrate the success of, of the Citizens' Jewelry event. And we decide to go to Borough Market and have a look around all the different stalls and, and vendors. Um, and the food and drink that they sell will probably have been grown and manufactured somewhere quite far away from the borough. So we might get Welsh lamb or Mancunian beer or Somerset cheese. Uh, and a major reason that those vendors are, are in Borough Market is because they know that it's a spot where they can sell lots of their products. Uh, in other words, their business is being driven by demand from people who are in Southwark. And of course, rearing sheep and, and putting beer into uh, beer kegs creates emissions, um, which raises a, a question. How do we account for those emissions elsewhere outside of the borough that are created on the farm or in the brewery, how do we account for those emissions if the demand for that lamb and beer stems from us going to borough market as a big group? And this is an interesting point that, that Catherine, uh, Catherine spoke to uh, a moment ago, that by creating demand for these products and by importing those products to the borough, the borough then uh, is responsible essentially for, for some of those emissions that, that got them here. And I use the example of a, a trip to Borough Market, but this applies to all industries and sectors um, and the whole spectrum of different products and services that are brought into the borough before being consumed here. So estimating that from an emissions perspective is, is tricky because we can't use fuel data as we did before for the, for the, for the um, fuel consumption emissions because the amount of demand is not really measured in, in units of fuel is, is not really a useful metric to, to use or a useful unit to consider. So instead we use economic data, excuse me, which tells us in fairly simple terms how much money is spent on different industries within Southern in a given year. And we can combine this economic data with some work carried out by academics uh, who are based at Leeds University to give us an emissions estimate. So there's a, a value that we can go between a conversion factor, which takes us from pounds spent to, to tons of CO2 released. Uh, and they're far cleverer than me, and their, but their methodology is, 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 really, is really interesting. So there's another group of emissions here that we're trying to pin down and, and create an estimate for. And we can call these consumption-based emissions because they, they arise from all of the consumption of products, goods, services within uh, within the borough. Uh, and I've got up on screen there another, another bar chart. And on the left hand side, you can see that donut. That's the same data shown as a bar this time. Uh, and that's our, that's our 1.2 million uh, uh, figure there. And on the right hand side, you can see uh, the total for consumption based emissions. And you'll notice, of course, that this is much higher. Um, and the reason the reason that it's much higher is uh, quite intuitive if you think about it. All of the emissions that go into rearing a sheep and uh, preparing the, the food and transporting it from Wales to London, that activity creates a lot more emissions than it does the chef preparing that food in a restaurant in Southwark uh, by, by using a gas cooker and so on. So it makes sense that by importing lots of goods and services, we create a lot more emissions uh, up and down the, the supply chains that that Catherine mentioned earlier. Um, and we can think of, I've called these emissions consumption-based here. You may also hear the phrase scope three, which is used to define these emissions. And the, the reason that we account for these separately is because they are created uh, outside of the borough. There's a lower degree of influence that we can have on Welsh lamb farmers, for instance, or Mancunian brewers. The borough of Southwark doesn't have the same degree of influence over those emissions as it does the fuel that is burned directly in boundary. So there's, a, there's an interesting layer of influence and the scope to change these things uh, that, that feeds into how we define Southwark's emissions. And we can take a, a deeper look at the consumption-based emissions here. Um, so 
This is the, the same green bar, but split out into lots of different industry sectors. Um, and you will see uh, a version of this was actually in, in Catherine's presentation earlier. Um, and what we can see is that activities which create lots of carbon, uh, like agriculture, manufacturing, rank quite highly on this list. There's a lot of spend on those uh, industry sectors within Southwark. And as a result, there's lots of uh, there's lots of emissions that we can associate and attribute to the borough as a result of that. And your eye is immediately drawn, of course, to this uh, to this large bar at the top, uh, which relates to transport and storage. And that uh, that is really representative of the fact that so much of what the of what the borough um, consumes is imported. Uh, it's an inner London borough that we're in. There's not a lot of stuff that's grown here, not a lot of goods and products and services that are, that are, that are manufactured within the borough. So much of what we consume is sent from, from very far away in many cases. So the transport and storage sectors really represent the most significant source of, of, uh, of consumption-based emissions there. The other thing to note on this is that you'll see at the bottom, uh, there's a, a label here for all other sectors. Uh, that is a list 15 long of, of different industries. And that's really ref representative of the fact that Southwark's economy is very diverse. Spend is made in some different areas. A lot of it is very small. Um, and as a result, we have this, we have this big hitter list of, of the top 10, if you like, but then we have a much smaller contributions from, from lots of smaller sectors down there, down there the, all of the sectors. List. So that's all that that refers to. Um, and this is, my, this is my final slide. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring this to a close and, and just sum up. Um, really, there are, there are different groups of emissions that the, the borough needs to think about. And there are different groups of emissions that come from different, uh, from different activities in the borough. The first group that we had a look at describes emissions from all of the in-borough fuel consumption. These are the easiest for us to influence and should be targeted first. And those are mostly the result of heating our, built, our homes and our offices, uh, meeting the borough's demand for electricity, driving around, that kind of thing. And the second of these groups, which are, which are currently on screen now, consumption-based emissions, they're harder to tackle, but it's a much bigger prize if we can reduce them because there are a larger total of emissions, if you like. Uh, and most significant amongst these are imported emissions from the transport sector and the consumption-based emissions associated with agriculture, construction, manufacturing, that kind of thing. They are also significant. Um, so I will bring us to a close there. A uh, minute or two ahead of time, I'm, I'm noticing. <laughs>